Hey everyone, welcome back. Rocket Lab will be reporting their Q3 2023 earnings this week. Let's take a look at what we can expect to see and a look at what we can hope to see. So first things first, we can take a look at what we can expect to see from the Q3 results themselves. With this, we have a pretty good indicator of what we can expect, seeing as we've already seen the guidance as well as the updated guidance after the failed September 19th launch. What we're going to do rather than focus too much on the Q3 results themselves is we're actually going to look at Q4 and beyond. So for Q4, I think a safe assumption here is to assume two or three launches. This is something that we'll circle back to a little later on in the video, but essentially what we do here is we're multiplying the number of launches, which is going to be two, by the electron revenue per launch, which is approximately $7.5 million. So 7.5 times two lands us around the $15 million mark range. As far as the cost of goods sold goes, essentially what we're doing is something similar. We're taking the number of electron launches within the quarter, and we're going to compare that with the tracking rate of cost of goods sold for each of the electron launches. Space systems revenue is a bit of a wild card in that we don't have quite as much clarity regarding that side of the business as we do for the electron launches, for example, but we still have a pretty good indicator of its overall growth trajectory. So with that, I think that a safe bet of 47.7 million dollars is a fair assumption to make. For the cost of goods sold for the space system side of the business, we do something similar that we do with the Electron in that we reference past results as well as kind of future guidance. So what the space system's margin is doing is gradually increasing over time. The reason that it's a safe assumption to make that the space system's margin is going to increase over time is during the Solero acquisition, it was mentioned how much of a drag Solero was on the overall space system's margins. As the legacy contracts are kind of being weeded away from Solero, you're seeing that the net drag that is Solero is having a lesser weight on the space systems margins overall. So to assume the 28% for space systems margins, I think that's fair because over time, the space systems margins is going to be 35, to even 40%. It's going to be higher than what it is currently. I could be a little bit off the mark with that one, but I think that a 30% margin assumption, maybe not this next quarter, but maybe within the next year is fair. So if I'm a little bit high, that's okay. Overall, I think we're directionally accurate here. So what we do next is we combine the revenue and the cost of goods sold, and ultimately that's going to give us the total revenue and the total cost of goods sold, therefore the gross profit, and therefore the total gross margin. Past that point, we need to calculate the operating expenses. Now you might notice right away that this number jumps way up, the research and development. There's a $14 million adjustment that was made relating to the development of Neutron's upper stage. Now this number for the fourth quarter for research and development, this could be lower as well. And the reason that I say that there could be another adjustment is because the overall agreement with Space Force was for $24.35 million. So if we look at the 14 from this past quarter, we can assume that maybe there's another 10 that is going to be awarded. Now this might not be awarded right away. This might be awarded over the next year as the Neutron continues its development. It could be on a, a sort of um, milestone schedule, so to speak. But overall, this number might be high. That's all I'm really trying to get to. Next up, we have the sales general and administrative. What we've done for this one is we've assumed it to be in relation to revenue as the past results have been. So another way of saying this is we're expecting that SGNA as a percent of revenue is going to have a similar relationship in the upcoming quarter as it's had in the past. So if we were to take this 42% of SGNA as a percent of revenue, essentially that is what's going to land us at the $26.6 million range. You take the R&D and then the SGNA together, what you're going to land it for total OPEX is about $65.6 .6 dollars. Again, that's assuming that there is no more credits towards the neutron that are being redeemed for the research and development. So as for the rest of the valuation, um, we're not gonna worry too much about the other things. We're not gonna get too into the weeds. And the reason for that is Rocket Lab is obviously not going to be a profitable company anytime soon. There are videos that I've made previously that go a little more in depth as far as the, the timeline towards profitability, whether that's for net income or free cash flow. Those are available, but in this one, we're more or less just trying to anticipate what kind of guidance for Q4 is going to be released this week. All right, next up, we've got the Electron. One thing I'm hoping that we'll get out of this earnings release is the announcement of Electron's next launch date. On September 19th, during Electron's 41st mission, the second stage saw an anomaly and ultimately prevented the payload from being delivered. The Electron has been grounded since then, only recently receiving authorization to continue launching. One thing that I did find peculiar was that it specifically mentions Launch Complex 1. The reason that I find that peculiar is because of what the implications are for Launch Complex 2. 
It makes it unclear if Electron has been able to have been being launched from LC2 or if it's continuing to not be authorized from LC2. All in all, it's not a big deal. You'll see that the remaining launches that were planned for the rest of the year were all out of the Mahai Peninsula. Now, one thing that Rocket Lab continues to mention during interviews is that a major bottleneck to the Electron launches is customer readiness. So if that is the case, it seems like the Mahai Peninsula is going to be very active Probably not for the rest of the year. I only imagine that a couple, maybe two or maybe three of these launches is actually going to go off during the rest of the year. But all of these launches here, I imagine these to be pushed into maybe the first half of next year, ultimately resulting in a very busy year. Previously, the guidance for 2023 was 15 launches. Now with September 19's anomaly, paired with the assumption that Q4 is going to get two or three launches, that's going to put us around 11 or 12 launches. Of those launches that weren't able to be put into 2023, we're going to assume that those have to be deferred to 2024. As a result, I'm wanting to know what's the new guidance for 2024? Is this going to remain at the 20 launches that have been previously mentioned? Or are the missing launches from this year expected to be piled into next year? Or is this going to be pushed into 2025? I guess that's TBD. All in all though, Rocket Lab is set to have a very busy 2024. Next up, let's get into the wishful thinking. Investor Day. Rocket Lab's 2021 Investor Day took place in July of 2021. Rocket Lab's 2022 Investor Day took place in September, so 14 months in between. Now, if you put another 14 months after the most recent Investor Day, that lands us here in November. Now, to play devil's advocate here, I don't think there's actually going to be an Investor Day. I just think it would be really cool to have another uh, like Neutron update or maybe a Constellation update. All in all, the more logical side of me does realize that it probably makes sense to have an Investor Day probably in the first half of 2024. The reason for that is because Neutron will be much further along in development. I mean, we already know the milestones for this year. The major milestones for this year were the Frosty Tanks and the Hot Fire. Now, we just recently saw the Frosty Tanks that were in, in the form of the cryogenic testing. And it seems like in the next couple months here, hopefully before the end of the year, we'll get that hot fire, which is the Archimedes engine testing. All right, now let's get in the weeds. In September of 2021, Rocket Lab announced the construction of a new production facility that was capable of supplying up to 2,000 reaction wheels per year. One year later, during the 2022 Investor Day presentation, this number seemed to have been updated to 3,000 units per year. Where things get a little odd, however, is two months later, during the Q3 results, the reaction wheel production capacity was mentioned to be 2,000 units again. So I'm a little unclear if maybe during the Investor Day presentation, I'm not sure if maybe they meant to write 2,000, but either way, we'll do a little bit of math here to kind of understand what the implications of these high volume reaction wheel production lines is going to be. All right, so this here, this just gives us an outline of whether we're at 2,000 or 3,000 reaction wheels per year. Now, one important thing to know about these reaction wheels is that there is typically three to four reaction wheels per spacecraft. So what we can do with the 2,000 or the 3,000 is we can simply divide that by three or by four to get an understanding of how many crafts we can be expecting to be providing for. So as you can see here, the quick math is that there is between the low end, 500, and the high end of 1,000 crafts that are going to be provided for per year. Now to take this one step further, there was a recent interview in the New Zealand Herald in which one of the staff mentioned that they are making approximately one reaction wheel per hour. The reason that I want to highlight that is because if you look at these two numbers, depending on if we're at 2,000 or 3,000, you'll notice that this one lands, I mean if we bring this out a little bit, get some decimals in there, One's going to land about 5.5 per day and the other's 8.2. So I'm assuming that they're working eight hours a day or maybe they could have even meant capacity. The reason that I want to highlight this is because it seems like something is being built that hasn't explicitly been announced. Now, Rocket Lab has not mentioned their own, not constellation, but they call it infrastructure plants. Now, I think that's a interesting point in itself. They don't call it a constellation in the way that SpaceX or Blue Origin does. They call it infrastructure. When these lines were talked about in the past, they talk about it being for a customer. Now, it doesn't seem likely that Rocket Lab would refer to themselves as a customer unless maybe they're intentionally trying to throw you off of the trail. All I'm going to say is that there are very few constellations that would need, even on the low end, 500 spacecraft per year. And if I were to bet on it, 
I have a pretty good idea who that assumption might be. Who are these reaction wheels for, and what are you hoping to hear from from the Q3 results? Let me know in the comments below, and if you got value from this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you guys for the hangout. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.